I bought an iMac, but I, re I really shouldn't have, okay? This is a stupid idea. The point of this video is to show you how stupid of an idea this was. This is the base model iMac that I bought brand new. This is a new computer. And according to the specs on the top, it has a dual core i5. That's right, Apple is still selling a computer with a dual core i5. So in today's video, I'm gonna unbox the worst Mac that you can buy. And we're gonna, we're just gonna kind of make fun of it because it's, it's really stupid and it's bad. Let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by Audible, which is fortunate because really the only good thing about this iMac are its speakers, perfect for listening to the leading provider of spoken word entertainment in one convenient place. Audible features an impressive selection of audiobooks, everything from new releases and bestsellers to exclusive Audible originals. One new original I would definitely recommend checking out is We've Got Answers, an honest and thoughtful look at race in America. Or you can try Powerful Women of the Medieval World, a piece which examines rebels and rulers that shaped history during the Middle Ages. These titles and many more are available through the new Audible Plus catalog, which you can try free for 30 days. Plus gives you access to hundreds of titles and interesting formats like words plus music, which weaves musical narratives with never before heard performances. Plus is more than just audiobooks. They have podcasts, originals, even guided fitness and meditation programs. If that sounds good to you, you can check out Audible with a free 30-day trial for new members by heading to audible.com slash LukeMiani or text LukeMiani to 500-500. Now, let's roast, I mean, review an iMac. Now, Apple sells this thing as the, the base model entry-level iMac, but really what this is, is the 2017 base model iMac. Yeah, you heard that right, 2017, that's when this thing came out. It has a dual core, 7th gen processor, it has 8 gigs of RAM, it has a 256 gigabyte SSD, or you can option it with a Fusion Drive for free, but obviously I didn't do that. It has a 1080p display, Intel Iris graphics, and it costs $1,100. So, um, well, let's just crack it open because I'm endlessly amused at the fact that this even exists. Now, you, you may be thinking, well, I bet you Apple just has a whole bunch of these things around, but I plugged the serial number into a service that lets you uh, track when a device was manufactured. And this thing was manufactured on the second week of March of 2021. So it, it's literally brand new. It, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Why do they still have this thing? We got the usual iMac accoutrement. We got the uh, got the magic keyboard. We got the magic mouse. That's probably the only useful thing in here. And here we have the 21.5 inch 1080p. Oh, that was the worst sound that has ever happened. I I really I really hated that. This is, this is a stupid video. I, I spent $1,100 on this. I'm so used to the 27s, like the iMac Pro, stuff like that. It's so little. Uh, it would be cute if it weren't for the fact that it's just absolutely terrible. I do kind of find it amusing to have this sort of presentation and the, the usual Apple packaging on <laughs> essentially a four-year-old iMac with a dual-core laptop chip like, these are the specs that you would find in a $600 Windows laptop four years ago. No way. No way. Is this thing really so old that it still comes with a microfiber cloth? Oh. Oh my goodness, I think this might be the redeeming feature. I can't reach. Ah, beans. Here we go, we're turning on a brand new four-year-old iMac. This is, it's gonna come with Big Sur, right? There's no way this comes with an outdated OS. That would be utterly hilarious. 
It's still booting. It's been like multiple minutes here. I don't know what's taking so long. Uh, oh, Jesus. What? <laughs> That's not good. I'm not actually, I, I don't actually know if this is Big Sur or not. It could, it could well be Catalina. <laughs> it's running Mac OS Catalina. This was made three weeks ago. And <laughs> it's running Catalina. Oh no, that's so sad. Yeah, and it, the first notification is update available Big Sur. It, oh my God, this is the laziest piece of sh I've ever seen. This is $1,100, they can't even be bothered to install the latest operating system on it. Look at this, in the about this Mac, it even says 21.5 inch iMac 2017. I almost wonder, if we could downgrade this thing. I've gotten very used to retina displays. This is the only Mac you can buy that doesn't have one. <laughs> this costs more than an M1 MacBook Air. Like I know it's a desktop, so it's not really the same thing, but like it's worse. I don't know why Apple hasn't gotten rid of this thing. I'm starting to think that this iMac is just like an immortal being that transcends the boundaries of space and time. Existence is an illusion. Immortality is within me. I, space, illusion. So as you can probably tell by the dynamic desktop, it's been a little while we've installed a couple of benchmarks. Now, I think we should start with Cinebench R23 just because I, I think that's bound to be the most amusing because this is a two core, four thread, KB Lake CPU. Oh, oh no, look at it go. That's really bad. It's so bad. So the CPU, if you could even call it that, that's in this thing is a Core i5-7360U. Uh, that might sound familiar because it's actually the exact same CPU that you would find in the Function Keys 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, the upside of that is that it's a super weak, old, low power processor, which sounds like a downside, I know, but it's, it doesn't produce a lot of heat. So this thing doesn't get very loud because the, uh, the thermals of this iMac chassis are actually pretty overkill for a CPU that's this garbage. Is it gonna take 10 minutes to do one single run? Six and a half hours later. So after 10 minutes, we completed a single Cinebench run, <laughs> just the one, and it yielded a score of 2526, which is absolutely shocking. Here's a comparison to other Macs that you could buy for about $1,100. Please don't buy this computer, okay? All right, so next up, we're gonna run Geekbench 5. This is a shorter test which means we won't have to wait as long. And I suspect that this thing is gonna be pretty significantly slower than like a three-year-old iPhone 10. <laughs> Catch. I'm bored. Hurry up. Ooh, I was not expecting triple digit multi-core. Oh no, that's so bad. <laughs> is that is that like on par with an iPhone 6s? iPhone 6s is still faster. Okay, it beats an iPhone 6. Good news, everyone. This iMac is faster than an iPhone 6. There should be a law against this iMac. So next up, I think we gotta do a graphics test. I'm gonna run Unigen Valley on the Extreme HD preset. That's what I do all the testing on. I'll be honest, I don't have high hopes. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's, 
That's about what I was expecting. <laughs> we're clocking nine. <laughs> we're, cl we're clocking nine FPS. Ooh, that's five right there. That's a new low. We got that five FPS gaming experience. Buy one now for $1,100. I'd like to see you build a PC that can get more than five FPS. You can't. Oh gosh. I I'm trying to think of a literally anything to, to salvage this computer. Okay, I guess the speakers on an iMac like this are pretty good. So if we go over into Final Cut Pro here, do a little speaker test. Or hack the computer. The displays are literally the exact same part. When we open up the machines, there are some very, very subtle differences. So clearly there's a, a good bit of optimization going on here, but Final Cut Pro runs pretty decently. Uh, the, the speakers on, on pretty much all iMacs, all the slim iMacs, are, are really good. Now, I wouldn't say it's $1,100 good. I would kind of expect good speakers if I'm shelling out 1100 bucks. The only other really redeeming quality about this, I guess, I mean, the I.O. is pretty good. You've got headphone jack, SD card, Ethernet, a couple of USBs, Thunderbolt. It's like a pretty good I.O. selection. Really, all the things that are good about this are just the things that are good about the iMac form factor. And this particular package it is pretty much the worst value iMac you could find. I mean, for $1,100, you could very, very easily score yourself a high-end 2017 5K iMac with dedicated graphics, quad-core chips, upgradable RAM, more SSD storage. Like, you can do so much better than this. A computer like this that it's, you know, it's not for people who even really know about computers. It's for like your grandma who just needs to check her email. But even then, you're paying hand over fist for old tech where you could just buy this exact computer used for like half of the money. So I, I, in my opinion, there is no there is no justification for this absolute hunk of garbage. Please don't buy this computer, okay? How is it that we live in a world where the iMac Pro got discontinued before this. Like, the iMac Pro, I would say, was a much more defensible product to, to still have on sale in 2021. Because at the very least, you know, it, it was getting a little old, but if they had cut the price or changed the configurations, it was still a pretty decent alternative to a Mac Pro, and Apple Silicon hasn't gotten to iMac Pro levels just yet. So you could argue that that was already kind of an interesting product to have, but but this was outdated immediately. There was never a time where this was a good spec for an iMac, and $1,100 is what it cost when it was new in 2017. It's what it costs now, four years later. It, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Buy $1,000 worth of gravel, okay? That's a better value than this iMac, at least $1,000 worth of gravel is useful. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I bought this iMac specifically so you don't have to, and we could laugh at it together. And now what I'm gonna be doing is putting it back in the box and returning it, because I'm not keeping this thing. And I, the last time I did this, I got a couple of comments from people that were like, you're like taking an advantage of Apple by returning their product. What? It's a return window. And also this thing sucks, so I don't, I don't have any regrets. I'm putting this in a box and I'm getting it out of here. If you like this video and you found it helpful, leave a like down below, I really appreciate it. I would also really appreciate it if you check out my Twitter, at Luke Miani. And with that, I will see you guys at the post office where I'll be returning this piece of garbage.